Hey everybody, Jim here with another video for you. This is Sci-Fi Spotlight, Alien Movies. But before we begin, at the end of this video, if you like what you see, please consider giving me a thumbs up, a possible subscribe. Most importantly, leave comments below. Now, on the third installment of this series, uh, I decided to start talking about movies about aliens because that is definitely a sci-fi trope if there ever was one. And of course, aliens have been around in movies, again, forever, for as long as uh, sci-fi movies have been a thing, starting off in the 50s. And there's so many great ones from way back then. Lots of B movies, lots of A movies, but, you know, they're all fun in their own way. But what really stoked my imagination, as far as science fiction in general, really started in 76 with Logan's Run, but really took root in 1977 with Star Wars, like I mentioned in a previous video. Uh, but the other movie that really stoked the imagination for this 10 year old in 1977, without a doubt, was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Richard Dreyfus, Terry Garr, and Francois Truffaut. Star Wars stoked my imagination. Close Encounters shook me to my core. Because to me, this movie was plausible. It took place in the Midwest of the United States, where I was living at the time. The little boy who gets kidnapped was only about four years younger than I was, so, I mean, I knew kids his age. And quite frankly, at the end of this movie, I just felt... I was in awe. Because, again, it felt like it could happen. And before that time... I never really thought about aliens or if there was life on other planets, but this movie definitely stoked the imagination. The tagline for this movie was, We are not alone. And for years after seeing this movie, I truly believe that. And then, speaking of UFO movies, we're going to go 180 degrees different. Now, this movie is supposedly based on a true story. It's called Fire in the Sky. Great ensemble cast in this movie, headlined by Robert Patrick, D.B. Sweeney, Peter Berg, Craig Schaefer, Henry Thomas, and James Garner, among others. And this movie is more of a procedural than anything, but there is one scene in particular where the man has a flashback of what happened to him when he was abducted by a UFO, and it is chilling. It is one of the freakiest things I have ever seen in a PG-13 movie. This is a very solid movie. But that scene is incredible. So check out Fire in the Sky if you've never seen it. And of course, if we're talking aliens, we have to go back to Alien. The xenomorph has become iconic. And... It's an incredible design for an alien, and it's just chef's kiss. It's one of the greatest aliens ever, period, without a doubt, if not the greatest. Now, I didn't include the Star Wars movies here because, quite honestly, they're so you could say Luke Skywalker's an alien in that movie, but Alien, how could I not include it? And if I'm talking about Alien, we got to be talking about the Predator movies as well. The original with Arnold Schwarzenegger, again, it's a classic. All these movies are great. I, I love them all. But that original one with Schwarzenegger came out of nowhere. And that Predator design, like the Alien uh, design, it's iconic. I'm going to go to a couple of action movies that have to do with aliens. The first one is I Come in Peace, a.k.a. Dark Angel. I guess it was released as Dark Angel everywhere else in the world. It was I Come in Peace here in the States with Dolph Lundgren. This is a goofy movie, but, you know, it's an alien drug dealer of all things. But you know what? It's a lot of fun. This movie's a lot of fun. This movie, on the other hand, is awesome. This would be my recommendation out of all these movies if you haven't seen them. The Hidden, directed by Jack Shoulder. and star starring... Kyle MacLachlan, and Michael Norrie. This movie, again, was a little tiny sleeper hit at the time and then kind of got forgotten about, and this movie's awesome. Uh, 
One of the reasons why I don't like Jason Goes to Hell is because it's a blatant ripoff of this movie. If you've seen Jason Goes to Hell and you haven't seen this movie, watch this movie and then let me know if you agree. But this movie is superior to that film in every way, and it's awesome. Again, if you've never seen The Hidden, please do so. And then we've got Starship Troopers, directed by Paul Verhoeven and starring Casper Van Dien, Dina Meyer, uh, Denise Richards, and the incredible Michael Ironside and Clancy Brown. Again, following up after uh, RoboCop and uh, Total Recall, this is the third of his unofficial sci-fi trilogy. You can throw Hollow Man in there if you want, but I don't want to because these three movies are awesome, and this one's no exception. The, the giant bugs in this movie, great creature design, and again, excellent movie. And we've got an under-the-radar one for you. We've got some uh, invasion movies for you, for lack of a better word. The first is 10 Cloverfield Lane. This is the follow-up to Cloverfield, which was a found footage movie about a kaiju in New York. This is not a found footage movie. This is a claustrophobic suspense thriller with one of the best performances from um, John Goodman in his entire career. And I love John Goodman. He's a great actor. He's awesome in this movie. And I don't want to go into it too much if you've never seen it. If you saw Cloverfield and you didn't like it because of the whole shaky cam thing, kind of like what I'm doing right now, and you didn't see the sequel because of it, I'm telling you, this is a conventional movie. And I think it's better than Cloverfield. I really, really enjoy this movie. Similar to that, we have A Quiet Place. Starring Emily Blunt and John Krasinski, and directed by John Krasinski. There's three of these movies now. I've only seen the first two, and I really enjoyed the first two. I'm going to get the third one as a blind buy, I'm sure, when it's available on Blu-ray, because I heard really good things about it as well. But this movie's really good. It, it's really good. The The young actress, uh, the deaf girl in this movie, is incredible. She is really, really good. Uh, her, her name escapes me at the moment. But this is a really good movie. I, I really enjoyed it, and I love the alien design in this. And then we have Steven Spielberg with War of the Worlds. Starring Tom Cruise, Dakota Fanning, and Tim Robbins. And again, this is a remake of the H.G. Uh, Wells. Well, no, I'm sorry. H.G. Uh, yeah, H.G. Wells story that was filmed in the 50s. Um, for some reason, I, I went blank and thought or I said Orson Welles with the radio play. <laughs> but... Uh, Great movie. It, it, it really is. It's a, it's a really good movie. And then we've got a couple other invasion movies. This one, I don't want to get into it too much if you've never seen it, but Dark City. Now, I love this movie. I know certain people don't like it. Hi, Stuart. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, it's like a combination of a couple of different genres. And I know most people's main argument is the lead is stiff as a board, and I totally agree. He's Rufus uh, Sewell is an okay actor in certain things. He's n totally miscast in this movie, but I love the ideas in this movie, and the final 20 minutes to me are amazing. So Dark City's a great movie. Check it out if you haven't seen it. And here's a real under-the-radar one for you. Attack the Block. This one stars uh, Nick Frost and uh, what's that kid's name? I always forget. Uh, John Boyega from uh, Star Wars. And this one is directed by uh, Joe Cornish. And this is a low-budget independent movie from the UK, and it's a lot of fun. It's basically these neighborhood punk kids are fighting aliens during an invasion. And at the beginning of the movie, nobody believes them. And by the end of the movie, all hell breaks loose. But yeah. This movie's a lot of fun. And then we've got Battle of Los Angeles. Starring Aaron Eckhart and Michelle Rodriguez. This movie's okay. It, it's basically just... It's, it's more or less like just watching a video game for an hour and a half. There's really no story. 
you're just dropped right in the middle of this war going on between aliens and a big battle that's going on in Los Angeles. And again, it's one of those movies while you're watching it, it's quite fine. It's entertaining. As soon as it's over, it's totally out of your brain. <laughs> Unlike this movie, this one's great. District 9. Starring Chartel Sh uh, Copley, and this one is written and directed by Neil Blumkamp. This was his movie debut, and he has not made a movie as good as this since. Um, I love this movie. It's it's a really cool idea of what would happen if a alien spaceship just more or less crash landed, and we it handles the apartheid and the immigration thing really cool, and it's just a cool movie. I really really enjoy District Nine. Okay, and then we're going to switch gears. We're going to go over to another Stephen King, or Stephen King, Steven Spielberg classic with E.T. Up until uh, Titanic, the most successful movie of all time. And E.T. was a phenomenon. It really was. Uh, I'll say this about Spielberg. Anytime he makes a movie about aliens, they're hits. Uh, War of the Worlds was huge. Close Encounters was real huge. But nothing was like E.T. E.T. was truly a phenomenon that even surpassed Jaws in Star Wars. It's just, and it's a great movie. It really is. So then we're going to switch over to some John Carpenter from Steven Spielberg. We got three from him. The first is Starman. Starring Jeff Bridges in his Academy nominated uh, role for uh, Best Actor and Karen Allen, among others. This is a really sweet movie. It's more of a romance than anything, but it's a really good movie. I really enjoy Starman a lot. Um, I know a lot of people don't really care for it, but, you know, I, I don't like romantic movies in general. This one's one of the exceptions. It's, it's mainly because of the performances between these two. Uh, but now we're talking about the thing. My favorite horror movie ever. I've gone on record many times. Not only is it my favorite horror movie ever, but the alien creature is iconic and incredible. The score is wonderful. And it's just the perfect movie. If you were going to show somebody anything about paranoia and you could take all the gore out of this, this movie would still work. It is just such a great movie. And I love it. I will always love it. It's just, yeah. And then we've got They Live. Let me open this puppy up. This is my Scream Factory 4K Steelbook. Let me zoom in so you can get the full beauty of this because it is absolutely beautiful. And like the thing, this movie, again, is a great, great film about paranoia and the politics of, of the day. And if anything, this movie has become more relevant as the years have gone on. It's aged like fine wine. I love They Live. We're going to end it on this one. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Directed by Philip Kaufman and starring the late, great Donald Sutherland Brooke Adams, Jeff Goldblum, uh, Veronica Cartwright, and Leonard Nimoy. I saw this one theatrically in 1978. And like Close Encounters, this movie shook me to my core, but not for the same reasons. Because instead of looking forward to seeing aliens, this movie made me terrified of an alien species. Especially considering your best friend, your mother, your father your child could be a pod person. This of course was a remake of the movie from the fifties with, uh, Kevin McCarthy. Uh, great movie. It really is. And it's been redone a couple of times since, uh, Abel Ferrara's version just simply called body snatchers, which came out in the nineties is really good. I did not like, uh, invasion with uh, Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig at all. I thought that movie was a piece of shit, but out of all the different versions, this one is definitely my favorite. And 
again, like the thing, it's just a perfect, perfect science fiction movie that deals with paranoia. The performances are incredible in this, especially Donald Sutherland. The ending of this movie is an all-timer. Every time I watch this movie, it still sends goosebumps. It's just a great, great film. And that's how we're going to wrap up this version of Sci-Fi Spotlight. I'm going to do one or two more of these. I'm not really sure. But I am definitely going to do a special video at the end of this before October, which I think you will all enjoy. But until then, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, possible subscribe, and most importantly, leave comments below. Let me know how you feel about these films. If you have any questions about any of these films, let me know what some of your favorite alien films are that I didn't touch. Uh, again, I have many more that I could have, quite honestly, this video could last three hours because there's so many. But tell me some of your favorite video or some of your favorite alien movies. So until then, I hope everybody's having a great day and we'll see you on the next one.